Hey guys, it's Barrett with The Gaming Camper. Today we're going to walk you through one of the most incredible products that I've ever got for the camper. It's an instant connect. It's so I can have always on unlimited internet at my camper. I'm going to walk you through how we installed it, the plan that we use, all the fine details, and my first impressions in this video coming up. So I wanted to do a video on why I chose the Instant Connect and how I decided to install my system. Let's start with why I chose the Instant Connect. There's an affiliate link in the description below, but I want to say that I did pay for this product and all of my services with no promotional discounts or anything. It's all with my money and I stand behind it and they just offered me an affiliate link so I am going to share that with you. I run a business for my camper, so for me it's important to have good internet service. It really helps a lot, especially now that my wife can occasionally work remotely. I had originally looked into Wi-Fi boosters as well as cell boosters. First of all, campground Wi-Fi, it just sucks. There's no way around it. You aren't going to get great help with a booster in my opinion. I've had one friend with a positive review, but everything else that I've seen basically says Wi-Fi boosters and cell boosters don't help at all. The first thing that always caused me not to follow through with ordering a cell booster was the fact that after doing a little research, they can actually slow your signal down. That's right, a cell booster can slow your signal down. Modern cell phones and technology incorporate a technology called MIMO, which means multiple in, multiple out. Cell phone boosters, they don't have the ability to support that MIMO, so everything's going through one channel. So it can slow your system down. So in order for you to know if the cell booster is giving you any gain or not, you're going to have to do a speed test with the cell booster shut off, do another one with it turned on, see which way it works better and go from there. I also didn't want to buy a booster right on the cusp of a 5G model coming out because I wanted it to last a little while before becoming obsolete overnight. Now, about the time that boosters started to support 5G, started making their way to the market, I started leaning towards cellular routers. A cellular router can have some of the benefits of a cellular booster without having the negative aspects of losing the MIMO. The cons to a wireless router or a cellular router are going to be that the downside is that the equipment costs are going to be a little bit more and you have to have a wireless plan that's dedicated to this specific router, which will act like a hotspot on steroids. But unlike a hotspot, you won't be able to move it easily out of the camper to take it anywhere else, at least depending on how you install it. You can install it temporarily if you want, and even suction cup the antenna to a window or put the antenna up and down every time you've set up. And if you want to do this temporarily, you can pass the wires for the antenna through the slide seals and stuff like that. The pros to a wireless router is that you can have the antenna directly on top of your camper. This is a stronger antenna and usually at a more optimal angle for transmission. The cellular router also can change between bands where a hotspot or a phone will be stuck in certain bands, which may be full due to just congestion in general. In the case of the Instant Connect, you can also add a directional antenna, which they call their binoculars. This allows you to have all of the benefits of a booster without the possible negative aspects. Now that binocular antenna for the 5G model, there's four antennas, so you get the MIMO. What makes the Instant Connect different than other cellular modems is that the modem is actually mounted inside the antenna up on the camper. This is optimal to other cellular routers because there's less wires coming in and you have less antenna signal loss from the antenna to the modem because those wires are only about this long. Now the downside of that is if you want to change the SIM card, you actually have to go to the antenna to change the SIM card because it's up in the modem. But you can have two SIM cards in your antenna and swap between those two without getting on the roof. Now let's talk about cell service. With a cellular router, you do have to get a cellular service or two. This can be a hurdle when on the quest to go for this option. There are a lot of unlimited plans out there that can be rather deceiving. I will say without a doubt, if you are a first responder or a nurse or able to get it at all through any other way, because I know they said electricians and stuff like that can get it as well, you're going to be the best using FirstNet. 
you will not find anything out there that'll beat the speed and be completely unlimited for the price. I guarantee that. I'm going to throw out some recorded speed tests on our travels. This is before I had the Instant Connect. This is just using a phone that I had, a cheap phone from FirstNet and my cell phone that was from Verizon at the time and showing the speeds at different campgrounds in the area. And FirstNet just blasted Verizon out of the water almost everywhere we went, except for one or two places which it was slower. And that's even without using the Instant Connect with the external antenna that's higher mounted at a better angle. I'm telling you, it's gonna go from right here. Now here are my initial tests from the Instant Connect just as soon as I hooked it up. This is the same FirstNet network on my iPad, first using the cellular just through my iPad, and then using the Instant Connect with the wireless router to get the speed difference. As you can tell, there was a noticeable difference right off the bat from the same spot in my front yard. Now I'll just throw this out there. Right now, where we're here at Yarberry Campground, I did a speed test with the Instant Connect. I got 126 download. Now, if you can't get FirstNet, the next best option that I've come across that I hear people talk about is from FMCA. I believe their plans through T-Mobile, but I think that it's $50 a month for unlimited, but you are gonna have a more limited network with the T-Mobile than you're gonna have with other networks. A lot of those truly unlimited plans that people use are actually grandfather plans that they lease from other people that have not let their plan expire, and they pay hundreds of dollars for this a month. So, yeah. Now I have a great first impression of the Instant Connect and we will do further testing and we'll share that with you. We will let you know how it's working and we'll continue to do speed tests on our travels just to give you accurate comparisons of what it looks like. Now let's talk about how we decided to install our Instant Connect system. I have an RV armor roof and one reason that I really like that is that you can add things to the roof as long as you use their products. I'm going to do a separate video about adding the antenna to the roof, so I'm not going to really focus on it a lot here, but I did have to drill a hole in the roof to pass the wire through, as well as I had to mount the antenna mount to the top of the roof. Now there are other ways around that, as I said, but that's the way that I chose to do it. As far as mounting the antenna, there were two places on my roof that I felt like I could do that easily. One was on the back of the camper where it's a little bit lower, pass the wire down through the fridge vent. And the other is up on top of the camper where I pass my solar wires through because I know where the wall is there and where that comes out at the bottom. And I knew that I could pass a wire easily from the roof to the cabinet down and then a power wire from the cabinet down to my 12 volt system. So that's what I decided to do. I will say with the Instant Connect, you only have one cable that you have to run from wherever the antenna is to the inside and that's gonna be a USB to a USB-C cable. And so it can be a little bit big just because the ends on that cable, you have to have a little bit bigger hole. If I had to do it over again, I passed the USB plug, just the regular USB plug down from the roof down into the camper, but that required a little bit bigger hole. So what I would probably do if I had to do it over again is I would put a fish down through that hole. I would get the smaller end, the USB-C cord, and I would tape that to the fish and pull that through just so that it didn't need quite as large of a hole there. I did decide that I wanted to use that same area that I had my solar wires, mainly because I knew where all the 12 volt and stuff was. I knew I could pass the wire through. It was a little bit higher, so I felt like the signal gain could be a little bit more. And the biggest thing for me is that the wireless router that goes inside the camper was gonna be more centrally located, so I was gonna have a better signal no matter where I was in the camper than mounting that in the very back of the camper. So the first step in order to put this wire through the roof was that I had to drill the hole for it to go in. And that's a pretty anxiety producing event if you've never drilled a hole in your RV roof, right? Because you don't know exactly where it's going through. I wanna show you this video here. It's actually of me drilling the hole and I'd started the hole and then I had this thought, is this over too far? Is it gonna hit my racetrack AC vent that goes around the camper? And it didn't, I never felt anything like metal when I was drilling through there. And I'm pretty sure that if you had a three quarter inch paddle bit, which I think is what I used, you hit some metal, you'd know it. So 
So then I tried to fish the cable down, but there was just two layers of the roof there because there's the, the roof and there's a layer of plywood that's down further. So when you drill that hole, you have to have a little bit of an extension there. But I couldn't get the wire to pass down through both of those holes. So I had to add, I actually used that extension for my paddle bit, taped it to there. So it had a little bit of weight on there. And then I dropped that cable down and went inside and was able to find it with no issue. Now, before I drilled that hole and I sent the cable down, I had already cut a hole in the back of my cabinet, which is hidden, but I had like a uh, cover there to bring the wires out of because when I installed my stuff before, I just used some spray foam. It didn't look that good and I was gonna have some more stuff. So I wanted to look a little bit better. So I did have a box that I mounted, or I didn't mount it yet. I took it and cut the hole out in the wall where it was gonna go in this cable entry box. And then I cut that out with just a, a oscillating saw and I had everything ready to go. And I was going to run the wires and stuff down and pass them through the box that wasn't installed yet and then install the box. And that worked out great. Now I used a cover just like I used for my solar in order to uh, cover up the entry point on that. And that was a little bit of an issue because that USB-C end didn't really fit through the cover because you got to pass the cable through that. I was able to disconnect the end, I take the plastic nut off, and there's a rubber washer in there that that nut tightens down over to make it watertight. If I took that nut out, um, and then I took the rubber piece out of there, I was able to pass the wire through the plastic housing, and then I was able to get that USB-C side, I was able to distort that rubber O-ring enough to get that in through the cable, and then I was able to put everything back together and keep things watertight there. So when I passed that cable down from the roof, all I did to seal that top piece with the cable entry housing there was I did take some RV armor stuff and I, I painted some down on the roof. I set that housing down and then I painted around it to seal everything in and I added a couple of coats of that and everything's great. Now for the antenna, I put some of the roofing material down on the roof and then I set the antenna down. And then I put a little bit of the roofing material, the sealant in each of the holes and put the screws down. And then I painted around the top of it all the way around to seal it in. And I did that a couple of times as well over the next couple of days. All right, so after that, I went back inside and evaluated the power options. You can power the system by either 110 or 12 volt. I'm not real sure why anybody would use a 110 version to power anything in an RV because you have always on 12 volt. And it just doesn't make sense to me of why you just wouldn't use it especially with this system because I want the internet to be on whenever I'm not hooked up to anything and it's very important to me so I was looking at my power options there now with my 300 watts of solar I hardly have dead batteries ever because I have lithium and they take a pretty good punch and they just keep taking it even in the winter time I've only had them go dead a couple of times with my solar not putting out so what I decided to do is I cut the ends off the supplied power adapter because the wire wasn't long enough to reach my 12 volt distribution block that I have in my basement and then I stripped the wires they were very small and I got the positive and negative wires there and then I used a crimp connector to attach them to a corresponding pair of 16 gauge wires that were long enough to reach my basement. I did use electrical tape for this connection to prevent it from coming loose and to protect it. After I emptied out the basement storage, everyone knows how much fun that is. Then I could remove the wall that covers my back electrical stuff and the plumbing lines. And then I used that same extension that I used to drop that other wire. I taped it to those uh, cords there and I dropped them in the wall so that they would come out in the bottom where the basement is. And then I went down there to find them. And sure enough, I found them without any issues, which was actually very strange because snake and wires, there's always issues. This project, I didn't have a curveball, and I'm still flabbergasted at it. I zip tied those wires to the solar wires that I have, and that way I could run them all the way to the front of the basement and connect them to my 12 volt distribution block with no issues whatsoever. Then I added a fuse. The Instant Connect system says that it generally uses less than one amp, but can use as much as two amps, so I placed a five amp fuse, which should be plenty for this system. I had left all the connections out of the router up to this point. Neither the USB plug nor the power cord 
were plugged into the router. After I cleaned up my zip ties, placed the cover back on the distribution block, then I went back inside the camper to start reading the directions a little bit better. And the directions seem to be a little vague to start with, but once you get to this point, they start making a lot more sense. Just know you have to get the power source to your router and a cable from the router to the antenna. I did already place my four antennas to the wireless router, making sure the 2.4 gigahertz and the five gigahertz antennas were in their appropriate locations. And that I had already mounted that router to the wall where I wanted it. Before I moved to the instructions, I did go ahead and mount a plastic box with the wall plate cover in that hole that I was talking about where I brought those wires down inside the cabinet. This was easy to add last because the wires were already there, but the ends of both wires weren't connected to anything. So I could just thread them through the plate and install the plate on the wall. Then as the direction stated, I plugged the power into the router and waited for all three lights to come on, the power, the LS, and the HS lights. I then used my iPad to connect the modem and set up the networks as instructed step by step. I wish I would have got some better footage of this, but I actually didn't install a screen recorder until after I was done almost. Then it prompted me to connect the antenna to the modem. I went back to the roof and I used the flathead screwdriver to pry open the bottom cover of the antenna, which this version of the antenna is called the cloud wings. Uh, the initial antenna version didn't have a bottom, it was called the angel wings. Then I slid the modem out. Initially, I had taken all the antenna cables off to take the modem out, but if you're very careful, you can slide it out enough to put the SIM card in without connecting the cables. Something else to remember, if you only have one SIM card, is that it goes in slot one. I didn't see any numbering of the slots personally on the modem, but the directions do say that slot one is the one that is closest to the antenna cables. I had that backwards at first. Also, the chip side of the card will go towards the narrow side of the modem, but it will only go in one way. So after I did that, I put the USB-C cable through the bottom of cover of the Cloudwings antenna. Then I plugged in the USB-C cable to the modem. And then I carefully snapped the lid close, making sure that you don't get the antenna wires combined in there because that can cause some distortion in your signal. Also, make sure the wires aren't crossing one another when you put the antenna back together. After that, I went ahead and temporarily hung the antenna on the pole. But before I drive anywhere, I had to go back and I had to put zip ties in, which I did do that later. But I wanted to make sure everything was up and running. And I wanted to get another few coats of the roofing membrane on that antenna before I zip tied everything down close. All right, so then I went back down to the router and I plugged in the USB cable to the router, which is in the blue part that says Instant Connect. Then I followed the directions on the website and it started initializing the SIM card. I simply named my SIM card FirstNet and selected that it is a FirstNet card. After the modem rebooted a couple of times, I was able to join one of the networks that I had previously set up on the router. And then I followed the cleanup instructions and used the wizard to remove any open Wi-Fi network that was used for setup because that's a security risk. And that was all that there really was to it. Really the hardest part running that wire from the uh, roof down inside and running the power wire. That's the hardest part to the whole thing. This install was exactly what I expected it to be. It's actually a little bit easier because I expected to run into a few more problems whenever I was fishing the wires through, so it really wasn't bad. I just didn't want the hassle of having to mess with the antenna all the time, but I did leave some extra wire up on the roof and I have one 10 foot extension cable for the wire. That way if I want to add the binoculars, the directional antenna in the future, I always can. I really like that this internet setup is always on and always powered. That means I can do things that I couldn't even think about before, like adding a Blink doorbell. I did that and I'm going to have a video on that coming out soon. The link's going to be up here. So I have a security camera on my camper now that protects it whenever I'm not there, that I can see outside the door whenever I'm boondocking somewhere. If I get that dreaded knock at 2 a.m., I can see who's there before I open the door visually and it gives me a little bit more peace of mind. So guys, so far, I'm loving the Insta Connect. It was a little bit on the expensive side. I think it was worth it personally. If you have it, let me know what you think of it down in the comments, but uh, I'll keep you updated and we'll follow this thing as far as it goes. So thanks guys for following us and just we'll see you next week. Do not forget to hit that subscribe button.
Thank you.